Good morning, folks. Want to do some garden updates, but uh, part of the duck troops coming around. A lot of you guys asked about the ducks, so I thought I'd start out with uh, Good morning, ducks. How you doing? That's one of the newest members of the troop there, which means the other one can't be far behind. I see the head just poking out a little bit. Those are Saxonies. And they came from a good friend named Steve. He was having some uh, processed for meat and he had to drive right past my place pretty much to get to the place he was going. So they have no idea how lucky they are. They now have a long life as layered ducks with my flock versus uh, a short trip to the oven. So uh, they've adapted really well. They had a little bit of argumentative behavior with the flock when they first got here. Um, they're tough ducks though, man. They, uh, they, they, they've quickly turned into kind of the dominance. And I think it's partly because these guys were all still molting, but they were really in heavy molt when they got here. So they were not feeling the top of their game. These guys are young spring bucks, man. They're ready to ready to rumble. So uh, two new layers to the flock. Anyway, I want to do some garden updates. And what I want to talk to you about today mostly is this amazing honey badger squash. And you can even see this leaf here has been uh, pretty much sucked dry by squash bugs. But squash bugs are one thing for a squash to survive because... Hey, you could grow a new leaf. What you can't grow is a new core of your body. And a core of the body of a squash plant is the stem. So anybody that's ever grown squash, especially in the south, knows what that is right there. That is an invasion by the squash vine borers. And it is not the only place this squash has had vine borers in it. It's also there. And down at the base, it's been hit. And if we go over here, there's another one of them here. It's not quite as bright as rain as the other one, but look, see that? Vine borers. This is generally like, you know, the equivalent of getting liver cancer and pancreatic cancer at the same time for a squash. Like you're dead when this happens to you. But what do we got going on here? And we got some other ones doing the same thing. Look at this. Now, I pollinated this one myself yesterday to make sure. But that is a well-formed female. Blossom opened yesterday for the first time. And uh, it was close this morning. And since I manually pollinated, I have no doubt this is going to form. I actually have a male blossom reserved for this one here, which I think is maybe two days away from opening, in case there aren't any. Because I'm getting a real scarcity of male blossoms right now. And then I got another female. And usually if they're not gonna form, by the time they're this size, they start to look sick. This one looks like it's gonna form. So it looks like I'm gonna get three just right there. Um, that vine is actually coming from here. So it's this plant right here with all that vine board damage just doing this. And this is another uh, vine forking off of it. Now, there's, it's still too young to know if that's going to form, but there's a female right there. This female looks to me like she's probably not going to form. It's just got an unhappiness to it, so I might not get that one, and they don't always form. But I've also got right here a brand new split vine coming out of the trunk, and that just started. We've had the weather cool down, and everything that didn't die during our hot dry miserable summer is turning around even these little pole beans here there was just a couple i popped in the spot they've uh if you look here you can see they've just failed to flower up till now now we have new growth coming out of them so maybe we'll get a few beans off of that but this squash is the is the star of this story here again you look at this vine here unhappy but coming out this end this is all brand new growth looks all happy so even though everything behind it so it's like outgrowing its misery and if you look at that stock on in the ground right there that is unhappy it's also sending out new growth so this vine here is new come around here check this see that tip that tip's now going to come up onto this trellis where's it come from same one this thing's all the way over there. This is 12 foot of vine. And this is it's all coming around. Now this one's not flowering yet. And this was an experiment. 
I've grown these in the spring. They usually look miserable in the summer. I usually clear the space and plant something in their spot. This year, I have so much production at so many places, I thought, I'm just gonna let them go and see what happens. And it looks like I'll get a second crop. This is one of the coolest productive plants. Nice male blossom there. And I may snag that as well. This one's already been open for a day and now it's, it's closing. So this is, it's done. If you wanna harvest them for pollen, you want them about right there when they just open. You can see that stamen has tons of pollen on it. But what you want to do is you do not want to put that in a plastic bag. It will rot, ferment, get nasty. You want to put it in like an old school paper bag, or you want to go ahead and let it dry. And then you can take the pollen off the stamen and put it in a little thing and you can use a Q-tip. Uh, I just generally, I only need them to last a day or two. I just keep them somewhere nice and dry. And then I'll just peel these off and I'll just manually use the stamen itself uh, to pollen it. You only need to get a little bit in there. Another male flower coming here. So it looks like we're gonna have plenty of male flowers to go along with our females as they open. And that's what you want. You wanna have males that are gonna open about the same time. Cause in the morning, it's still morning, but in the early morning when I come out here, there's bees all over these things when they open, they love them. So as long as we get that and that open at the same time, we're good. But yesterday when I came out here, this was open and not a single male out here was open. I had another plant in a total different location that I went and got the blossom and brought it over and manually pollinated. But the fact that these can grow with vine borers in them is insane to me. It's insane to me. Um, this, in another couple days, will be almost twice its size and it will be nice and green like this and you can use it as a zucchini. If I let it go a few weeks, it will get about down to my hand in length down here. Go back like this. Came like down there, like it'll grow another foot and a half. And this neck will get about that big around. This will form a great big seed bulb right here where the seeds are. But only from here down will have seed in it. It will turn orange and it will taste a lot like a butternut. Not exactly like a butternut, but a lot like a butternut. It will then be a winter squash. It will store for months without refrigeration. So what I have here is a zucchini and I have a winter squash in one. And I have a plant that will survive the, the plague of the vine borer. And this is from Save Seed. And I, of course we'll save seed. This will be one, I've got some earlier ones this year marked. I'll save seed from this. I am growing another uh, Cucuberta moschetta or moschata, I think is the way you say it, uh, species so that it can cross pollinate. And that actually ended up being a good thing yesterday because I have not yet produced anything off of this other uh, Moshada uh, uh, squash. It's called Seminole Pumpkin, and I've never planted it, to be fair, at the right time of year. It also seems to be the honey badger squash we're looking for. There's one here. You see how that blossom is closed up? It's only open for a day, maybe two, and it has to get pollinated. Nice little female formed blossom. There was not a male flower on this plant open. And they have an interesting looking male flower. This one's not open yet, but you can see they almost have their own little tendrils. But none of them were open. Most, it looks like this is huge. This is all honeydew melon. And the honeydew melon, a little hoverfly. I don't know if you can see them or not there. Uh, the honeydew melon is, since we got all the rain and the weather temp changed, I got a couple honeydews off it early. It's all coming back around. I've got melons setting just everywhere. I'm sure only maybe half of them will form, but if half of them form, that one's formed. That's gonna be a nice one. And they grow beautiful off these trellises. Anyway, back to this guy here. So it's also got the vine borer damage all through it right here and it survived. So now what I found is two squash, two high value food squash that are storable they can handle my vine borers. And so what I did yesterday, and everyone's like, this is gonna be a Franken squash. You gotta stop that, I'll explain it to you. That's not how it works. I took a male, the male blossom that I used to manually pollinate that trombuchino over there, and since there were no males for this, I cross-pollinated it. Now what that's gonna result in is this squash right here, assuming there was enough pollen to make it happen, since they're both C. moshadas, it will grow, it will develop, and unless something happens to it, it will turn into a, a seminal pumpkin that we can eat. The seeds out of it will be the hybrid. 
when one squash or one melon of the same species pollinates another and cross pollinates it, nothing happens to the plant that gets cross pollinated in its first generation. It would be like if you had a shepherd and a collie and you're gonna make shepherd collie puppies, when you have the shepherd sire breed with the with the, the collie dom, right? Your 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 dam, your your female dog, right? And she has puppies, she doesn't turn into a shepherd collie, she has shepherd collie puppies, she stays a collie. That's how squash works. And I, I don't know where this has come from where some people think, well, if this one gets crossed with that, it's gonna make a Franken squash. No, it's gonna make some sort of a cross in if you plant those seeds, and you can bet your butt. If that sucker turns into a nice, beautiful form squash, I will plant that seed and I'll see what happens when we get this cross. It could be a very, very interesting cross. Everything you see in a typical garden, something like these Cuban L peppers, right? Um, something like this lemon basil, right? All of it, all of it. Well, here's, here's this is actually Genovese basil. And this is lemon basil side by side. The way you get these is you get them through crossing and back crossing and recrossing until you come up with either a new hybrid or then you start regrowing and saving and regrow and save for a few generations and you prove out a new heirloom. That's how all this stuff happens. We don't need to be afraid of things crossing with each other. Um, other things doing well, the sweet potato's kind of gotten and lost its mind. Um, most of my peppers are looking beautiful. These Cuban L's here are just uber productive i mean i like the way they're really good fried when they're like this this yellow color but i like them when they turn that red they're just a totally different pepper they're just so sweet when that happens um these were the uh you see i even just threw away some of the uh, eggplants down there it turned yellow uh but these eggplants were about shot looking in our in our summer darth and they're coming back around and they're starting to look produce again i gotta pick those or they're gonna go bad the only place i've had something that was really unhappy are these peppers over here these were some extra peppers that i started you know in my seed starting system and they got really leggy and i just threw them in the ground when they were about to die and i gave them no love this year and you can see this is called chlorosis if you ever see that in your leaves that's chlorosis and that's almost always a, just a straight up nutrient deficiency now, you could have different types of chlorosis where your nutrient deficiency is instead of, uh, you know, potassium or, uh, or nitrogen or what have you, you could have like a calcium or magnesium or an iron deficiency. This is a straight up macronutrient deficiency. And the way I know that is see how these leaves up here are starting to turn nice and pretty green again. I just, look, you can see right there, I gave them a double dose of Dr. Earth fertilizer and they're turning straight around. So these will be a good late season, even though they kind of got dwarfed and unhappy. And this guy here was so leggy, I had to prune him. They'll end up with a really big production for us, probably in early November, right before our first frost. This will be kind of the last. And again, here, look, these are um, eggplants. Again, these Asian eggplants that I, I basically cut them almost to the ground. You can see here where I cut this off because they were so unhappy. And I just left them in the ground and look, I, I cannot eat all of these this year. I will not plant as many eggplants as I did last year or this year, next year. It's just not happening. Anyway, things are looking really good, but boy, that, uh, that trombuccino, I've grown it for years, but I've never tried to let it make it through the misery. You know, once it got like this and then it just, this plant three weeks ago, it just looked horrible. And so I've always, once that happens, just said, hey, we're not going to get enough out of it. Look at that. Now, my plan next year is actually to plant a lot more of it, to plant it along the back trellises early, get as much from it as possible. Then I will still go ahead and take it out, and I'll select the plants that look like they have the best chance of doing this because they're not all going to be able to do it. And I'll save my seed from my second flush. Those are my survivors. Those are my honey badgers of honey badgers, right? So like my, my toughest honey badgers is where I'll be, because this plant, this is a caloric storage plant. That sucker right there, when it turns orange and it fully matures, will store for four to six months with no refrigeration. And it's all edible down to the bulb. 
instead of being like a butternut where you cut it open and you got like half of it is seeds, that neck is 100% solid. It also, again, when you pick it as a zucchini, and I mean, you could pick it now, but you could just wait a couple, you know, a few days, it'll get a lot bigger. It makes the best zucchini noodles ever. I have one of those little twisty things that you twist and you get zucchini noodles. Well, it's perfectly straight when you grow them on a trellis. There's maybe a little bendy part you got to cut off up there. And it's solid all the way through with no seeds. So you get a full yield with those uh, noodle makers. It's just awesome. So anyway, that's where we're at. A little quick look over here. Those uh, Asian red noodle beans are looking really good. They also look a little bit nitrogen efficient. See how light green that is? I just gave them a nice little helping of Dr. Earth. I'll probably get out here tomorrow night. You always want to do this in the evening. I use the Garrett juice in a, in a spray, spray. I will spray them all with Garrett juice and give them kind of a foliar feed. These peppers here were well taken care of when they were put in. They weren't abandoned and abused like the ones on the other side. And you can see the difference in the leaves because this is all the same soil, guys, right? But they were, they were fertilized when they were supposed to be. They just got another shot. Um, they produced a bunch of peppers. They were harvested, and then it got really hot, and then they stopped producing. There's maybe a, a couple little ones that I'd ever picked on them. But now look. There's the blossoms. Second flush. So these guys will be probably loaded with peppers in a couple weeks. Absolutely loaded with them. And then we have our late season eggplant, which apparently I didn't need to plant, but I did because I thought the other ones were dead. And it's starting to, they're starting to produce and they're looking really healthy, even though they had some leaf damage by pests. You can see what happens as soon as the weather turn and the stress is off the plant, the pest damage is irrelevant. That's the strong plant can handle a few holes in its leaves. And the new growth looks like this. And it's just getting through that, that, that summer darth. Anyway, guys, 